So we have heard it said for a long time now, Nvidia is just better for DX11 games, with AMD often lagging behind in those titles. Well, it seems that the red team is out to change the narrative, releasing a new preview driver which can drastically improve DX11 performance. But is it enough to catch up to Nvidia? Well, that's what we're going to find out today. Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and some of you may have seen the news about AMD's new preview driver, which it claims can actually improve performance by up to 17% in certain DX11 games. Well, as someone who spends a lot of time benchmarking different game engines and APIs, this certainly piqued my interest, so today we're going to take a closer look at this new preview driver from AMD. The first thing you need to know is that this is indeed labelled as a May preview driver for 2022. In other words, it is a beta driver and it is not the latest official Wuckle release. Still, in this video I want to find out exactly how much more performance is on offer thanks to this preview driver. So we're going to be doing that with the RX 6800 XT. First off, I benchmarked 14 different games using the official 22.5.1 driver and then again with the May preview driver so we can really isolate the differences in the driver performance. Just for interest sake, I did also benchmark the NVIDIA RTX 3080 10GB using the latest 512.77 driver so we can also see how the May preview driver affects performance relative to AMD's competition. Of the 14 games I chose then, some of them are slightly newer and others are kind of more older classics. I really did try and go for a bit of a balance. Not all of them are exclusively DX11 titles either. Some of them do give you the option for either DX11 or DX12, but obviously for the purposes of this video I was benchmarking the DX11 versions. All benchmarking was done with our regular GPU test system which is powered by MSI. So this is built on Intel's i9-12900K CPU and that's paired with the MSI Z690 Unify motherboard and we also have 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory clocked at 6000MHz. Both GPUs were tested with resizable bar enabled and we are also using the MSI MPG321URQD 4K monitor. The final point to mention then is that while I did benchmark 14 games at 1080p, 1440p and 4K, I'm not going to show every single one of those results in this video, otherwise we will be here for hours and hours. However, all of those results are going to be uploaded to the written article on kitguru.net, so if you do want to check out all 14 games across all three resolutions in your own time, there will be a link to that article down in the description below. Kicking off with Assassin's Creed Odyssey then, as a reminder, at the top of the chart we have the RX 6800 XT using the official 22.5.1 driver. Then in the middle we have the 6800 XT running the May preview driver, so that's the one we're really interested in. While at the very bottom we have the RTX 3080 for interest sake. Straight away then we can see a tidy improvement for AMD when using the preview driver. Yes, the average frame rate does go up by almost 10 FPS, but the 1% lows are much more impressive, jumping up from 80 FPS to over 100 FPS, which is actually a 26% improvement. Up at 1440p as well, we can still see very decent improvements. They're just maybe not as large as we saw at 1080p. The average frame rate here has come up by 5% with the preview driver, but once again, it's the 1% lows that see the most benefit, improving by 13% compared to the 22.5.1 driver. Rounding out Odyssey with 4K resolution, here the difference in average frame rate is getting very close to the margin of error, but we can still see a tangible gain to the 1% lows, here with an 8% boost thanks to the preview driver. Next up then we're going to take a look at Battlefield 5 and here we're going to skip over 1080p to go right in at 1440p. It's another clear case of solid improvements thanks to the preview driver with both the average FPS and 1% lows 
improving by 7 and 10% respectively. That brings the 6800 XT level with the RTX 3080 in this title, when previously it was coming in that bit slower. At 4K2, we can actually see even bigger gains for the 6800 XT when using the preview driver. This time with a sizable 13% boost to the average frame rate and a 17% improvement to the 1% lows. Two games in, it is honestly a very good start for the preview driver. This is really impressive stuff. The good news just keeps on coming as well as we take a look at Days Gone. Focusing on 1440p here, we can see a small improvement of 6 FPS to the average frame rate. Once more though, it is the difference made to the 1% lows, which I think is the bigger deal. Here we are looking at a 10% gain for the 6800 XT when using the preview driver. Considering Days Gone uses Unreal Engine 4, an engine where AMD has historically struggled, this could be very good news indeed, and do stick around to later on in the video where I also test Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is another UE4 title, to see if it scales similarly. Next up then is Dying Light 2, where at 1440p we actually saw next to no difference in the average frame rate between either the preview or 22.5.1 drivers. The key though is the 1% lows, as with the preview driver, the 6800 XT runs that bit smoother with a 15% increase to the 1% lows. That is actually especially important considering the RTX 3080 initially had the upper hand for 1% low performance in this game, but that lead has now evaporated when testing with the AMD preview driver. Moving on though to Far Cry 5, here we saw very consistent performance across all three resolutions tested. The preview driver nets a consistent gain of between 3 to 4% compared to the 22.5.1 driver, and that does include the 1% low performance. It all scaled the same. A 3% difference is just outside margin for error, so it is a measurable improvement, but it's just nothing to really get excited about. The same goes for God of War as well. Across every resolution tested, I just saw no difference between either AMD driver for the RX 6800 XT. The numbers do just vary ever so slightly due to the margin of error, but there's certainly no noticeable improvement from the preview driver in my testing. Moving on though, and here we come to a big one. Grand Theft Auto V, still one of the most popular games on Steam almost a decade after its release. Here we can again see next to no change to the average frame rates for the 6800 XT when using the preview driver. The 1% lows do improve by 5% at 1440p, but it's not exactly a game changer, particularly as the RTX 3080 has a clear lead in this game. At 4K2, we can see exactly the same thing, just now the frame rates are lower across the board. It is worth noting I did do my testing with 8 times MSAA to try and keep us as GPU limited as possible, and that does just reduce the frame rate fairly significantly. Back to Unreal Engine 4 though, and it's time to take another look with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. At 1440p we do see some benefit to the preview driver, with a 3% improvement to both the average and 1% low frame rates. It's just not as impressive as the gains we saw in Days Gone. Both of these GPUs really do need the 4K resolution to be pushed in this game though, and at that resolution the differences between the two drivers shrinks to almost nothing, while we can also see that the RTX 3080 still has a handy lead over the 6800 XT. AMD did claim its biggest performance increase in Total War Saga Troy however, and here the preview driver definitely provides a good bump to performance. At 1080p for instance we can see a 13% improvement to both the average FPS and the 1% lows, and that is actually enough to take the 6800 XT well past the RTX 3080. At 1440p, the gains are admittedly smaller, but they are still enough to keep the 6800 XT ahead of the RTX 3080. Here we are looking at 9 to 10% gains for the average and 1% lows, respectively. Because of those numbers, I was hoping to see similar improvements in Total War Warhammer 3 as it is the newest release using the same engine, but alas, 
it was not to be. The 1% lows do still get a decent bump with a 7% boost at 1440p compared to the 22.5.1 driver, but the average frame rate remained pretty much unchanged between the two drivers. The RTX 3080 also does significantly better in this title, especially at 4K, where the AMD preview driver makes next to no difference. I did also test Watch Dogs Legion, and at 1440p, we can see solid improvements for the preview driver, particularly in the 1% lows, which actually improved by 11%. However, this test is mainly academic, as you will still get better performance when using DX12 with an RGNA2 GPU in this game. We're almost at the end of the benchmarks now, but we do have time to take a look at another classic game, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This isn't actually the best showcase for the preview driver though, but we do get some improvements, particularly in the 1% lows, which see a 4% performance boost. It's not enough to close the gap on the RTX 3080, however, particularly at 4K, where we once again see even smaller performance gains from the preview driver. Of the 14 DX11 games I tested though, most of them did indeed show small improvements to performance when using the AMD Preview Driver. However, there were actually two games I tested, being Control and Crisis Remastered, where we actually saw significant performance regressions. In both cases, the average frame rate actually improved ever so slightly, but it was the 1% lows which got significantly worse with the Preview Driver. I personally have actually no idea why this was the case, but I did make sure to triple check all of these results using DDU to uninstall the driver, test 22.5.1 again, before confirming the results with the preview driver. What's really odd is that Capframe X actually also tested Crisis Remastered with the preview driver, and they saw big gains, so like I said, I really have no idea what is going on here. All I can say is I did triple check the results, they were all very consistent across all three of my runs, so if you do have any ideas of what might be going on here, do let me know down in the comments. It's time to leave the individual game benchmarks behind us though, so we'll go ahead and take a look at the big picture overview with our 14 game average results. Starting off at 1080p then, we can see a clear improvement for DX11 performance using the May preview driver. Yes, the average frame rate did increase by 4%, but it's the 1% lows, which are arguably more important, which saw a 9% boost up to 125.5 FPS. And that is actually slightly better than the RTX 3080's 1% low results, though the average frame rate is still slightly behind. At 1440p, we are seeing another 4% improvement to the average frame rate, when using the preview driver, but it's again the 1% lows which see a bigger increase, this time with a 5% boost. It is also more of the same at 4K, with another 4% improvement to the average frame rate, though it's a smaller 2% margin for the 1% lows. The RX 6800 XT still can't quite catch the RTX 3080 at this resolution, but it definitely comes closer with the preview driver. Purely out of interest, I did also take another look at average performance, this time discarding the results from both Control and Crisis Remastered, as both of those titles saw a huge performance regression for the 1% lows. Removing those gains does paint a more positive picture for the preview driver, with the 1% lows now seeing a 10% boost on average at 1080p, while at 1440p, the 1% lows see an 8% average improvement compared to the 22.5.1 driver. So, after all of that testing, it is honestly pretty easy to conclude that AMD is indeed making big strides in the right direction with its new preview driver. Performance did improve dramatically in certain cases, and particularly in the 1% lows, which generally improved across the board, resulting in a smoother gaming experience. As we saw though, this driver alone isn't enough for the RX 6800 XT to overtake the RTX 3080 in DX11 performance, but it is a big step in the right direction. The main problem right now though is that this driver only applies to the RX 6000 series of GPUs, so if you've got an older Polaris or Vega based graphics card, 
then you're not going to feel the benefits, which is unfortunate. My personal inkling is that this preview driver is AMD really laying the groundwork for its RDNA 3 series of GPUs. As the company knows, it has work to be done to really one-up NVIDIA when it comes to performance in older DX11 titles. Only time will tell if that actually is the case, but for now, if you do have an RX 6000 series GPU, the AMD May preview driver is definitely worth checking out. That is going to do it for this video though guys, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know in your comments down below. You can also ding that notification bell and subscribe if you haven't already, and why not come chat with us on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also check out our merch store, and if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That is it for this video though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one.